Okay, good evening. Welcome to the November 9th Park and Recreation Commission meeting. If we could all stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance right now, that would be great. All right, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good evening, everyone. All right, at this time we call the, the uh, we've called the meeting to order and our roll call. We are missing uh, Commissioner Whiney and uh, Commissioner Olson at this time. We will proceed to the meeting minutes. We have three minutes to approve. We have the minutes from the July 13th meeting that we had not voted on. So if I could have a motion on those minutes. I make a motion to approve the July 13th meeting minutes. Yeah, motion made. Can I second that? Second in. Okay. Can we vote? Is our, our electronic, are they working tonight? Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything yet. It just, mine says motion on it. Same here. There we go. Vice Chair Veretti, your vote. It, his screen looks the same as mine, so I don't know. You just what take a voice vote. Okay, let's do a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, those minutes pass. We'll move on to the next set of minutes. Uh, we are going to approve the Park and Recreation Commission meeting minutes for the October 12th, 2021 meeting. I could have a motion on those minutes. I make a motion to approve the October 12th meeting minutes. And I second it. Okay. If we could have a vote. Commissioner Munoz, I guess we'll do verbal. Aye. 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 Okay. Those pass. And we have the minutes for the special meeting, the Park and Recreation Commission meeting with the Library of Trustees, trustees which occurred October 26th. So we can have a motion. I motion to approve those. And I'll second. And... Voice, voice vote, uh, Commissioner Veretti? Aye. Aye. Okay, those minutes pass. All right. The next section of our agenda is communication from the public. This portion of the agenda is intended for the general public comment only on items within the commission's jurisdiction that are listed or not listed on the agenda. Persons wishing to address the Parks and Recreation Commission are requested to identify themselves and state the matter on which they wish to comment. No action will be taken on matters not listed on the agenda. Please observe a three-minute limit for communications. Ms. Vargas, are there any written communications from the public? No, Chair, there are no written comments. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards from the public? No, Chair, there are no speaker cards. Thank you. Seeing none, we will move on to the next agenda item, which is our youth update. But it looks like our youth aren't here. Are we having any substitute from the staff with an update? No? Okay. All right. Item number seven are our discussion items, the park equipment standard scoring sheet. I don't know. It says Ms. Martin on it, but I know she's not here, so... It is, it is uh, me, uh, Ann Turner. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Chair Wentworth. So we just wanted to talk with you a little bit about the scoring sheets. I know we had some questions about the, them last time. We will be bringing the full park standards back to you in January, um, but we did just want to have a chance to talk with you a little bit about those scoring sheets that you saw. Um, I know there were some questions about not being able to sort of see the materials or understand exactly what the materials were were 
um, that the items were made out of. This is what we're really looking for from the commission. We're looking for you to go through the PowerPoint that we sent, and we're happy to, to resend it to you so you have a chance to look at it again. I know that it probably uh, can get lost in your email. But just kind of get a sense of what would you like to see and where would you like to see it? So as an example, in a large regional park, would you like the amenities in a large regional park to be of the cement class? So a c cement benches, cement, um, trash cans, you know, so that they would all be in that class in a large regional park. In a neighborhood park or a pocket park, would you like to see sort of that variegated metal, that black metal, so the trash cans match the benches and the benches match the tables. And then so we're just kind of wanting you to go through and look at the items that are there and say, hey, I think this would look great in X. Or, you know what, I don't really like this and don't think that it really fits in anywhere in Corona. And so think a little bit about our park inventory. Um, think a little bit about, um, I know that for many of you, you went out and scored the parks during our facilities assessments, and so you've gone out to the parks and looked at them. So think about the kind of parks where you feel like this furniture would look the best. So is this in a small park? Is this in a pocket park? Is this a neighborhood? Um, is this a larger sort of sports park? And then really, we're just looking for some direction on look and feel. Um, based upon the way that you would go through those scorecards and go through those materials, we will surmise your recommendations and bring those back to you in January. And then what we'd like to do as we are heading into budget season, um, that really begins for us in January, is to be able to speak to the council about the fact that you have given us your preferences. This is also going to be some direction for our consultant who's going to come in and do the park's master plan. So I did want to update update um, the commission on that. Um, we do have the RFP out for the parks master plan right now. Um, we do not yet have the RFP out for the city park master plan, um, but we are hoping that that RFP will be out about three more weeks, uh, and then we should be able to score those and, and make a selection. We're hoping to be able to share with you um, either in December or at your January meeting uh, who has won that that bid. Um, but I just wanted to provide that direction around the, the park standard. Um, I will ask, uh, as staff, we will make sure that you get both that standard, um, the slide deck that you had at your last meeting that showed those standards, and then the scorecard. And we will email those to you. All right. Uh, are there any discussion? issues on that? Uh, Commissioner Munoz, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? I do, I do. Uh, first, I'd like to applaud the uh, staff for the homework they did, the research that they put together for this. I know it takes a lot of time to even look at the catalogs and look at park sites and walk the sites and kind of get a taste of what the furniture has to offer, the color, the texture and all that, and the, the shadow it casts and all that, those things. But as a landscape architect, we take a lot of time in choosing site furniture for a park site for any given city. And when we do that, though, we really take it to home where we actually go to the site, even and when it's just plain old dirt, and you can walk it and get the feel of the land. And at the end of the day, and my wife will hate me for this, but I say to her all the time, that has to sing to me whatever we pick out at a park site. It has to celebrate the space. It has to be thematic, you know, whether it be color or the theme. So, for example, Mountain Gate Park recently was we added the uh, the uh, dinosaur bones and then the, the mammoth too. So that's already creating a theme for a pretty large park size. So it's already talking to me about that, you know. So when you say sing to me, it needs to really begin. A, all the musical notes need to be in place for the site furniture because they are all over benches and, and trash receptacles and 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 picnic tables and barbecues and hot coal things and, and signage. And so I kind of went through the list. I put my numbers down, yes and no, as I was asked to do. And so I did that. And I have comments also. So when you receive this, you know, take it for what it's worth. That's my personal thoughts about that. But again, we need to celebrate the space with our site furniture, because they're all over. Paint by numbers type of gift. And then on top of that, we really need to look at how it, it sings to us, you know, because it's, it's going to be there for a long time. 
And granted, barbecues will get, they have like a two or three year time span, but benches will be there for a long time and, and tables, you know, drinking fountains. You know, they just need to express some thoughts behind that and a spirit of, of, of Corona. So. I, th I think for staff's perspective, we just want to get a sense. Um, this is not going to be the exact site furniture that would be at any site. We would hope that through our parks master plan, um, we would have those real individualized experiences at each park, but we want to know the, sort of the class of furniture. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that for us. We always can change the color palette. That's, that's relatively easy except for the cement. Um, but we want to have a, a, a class of furniture. What we found in COVID and as we are starting to move out of our sort of maintenance deficiencies um, is that it's really difficult for us if we don't have back stock. So if somebody's torn something up, if we have back stock, if we know that we use this type of bench, we can have back stock of that and then we can replace it when it gets vandalized or damaged or has reached the end of its of its reasonable life. Uh, and we hope that with the consultant on the parks master plan that they will also give us some, some direction. But we at least want to begin to start talking about sort of the class of furniture um, that we want so that there is a, a unifying palette uh, in Corona, I think one of the challenges we have is that different parks were put together at different times and that lack of unification, which is something that we're very eager to create in, in, our, in our spaces, is that inclusive, unified, signature Corona look. Um, so um, I, I'm eager to see your comments and we will take those into consideration and we'll bring that back to you in January. Commissioner Beretti, do you have anything you need to add? Thank you. Nope, that, I have nothing. Okay. Um, well, I took the email to mean that I needed to come with it scored. I actually wrote it on the notebook and transferred it to the paper. So I'm prepared to give you my comments tonight. Um, I would like to just make a note on the drinking fountain, just so the uh, commissioners are aware, too, that... On the drinking fountain selections, B and D both have the bottom fountain for dogs. And I have yet to find that in our parks where we've been able to maintain that well enough in working condition because it's just getting between the people using it and what's going on. It just seems to fill up with water and just not be in the state that we want it in. So um, I guess I just wanted to bring that to the other commissioner's attention, that that's something that I see on a regular basis. So it's not one that I selected. I was wondering if there were other dog watering options in your, uh, I don't know, in your arsenal that would come forward <laughs> later. Only because, like I said, I just, I just think that's not working. And I, I just don't see it working. So if we could come up with that. That would be my only addition. I didn't want to write all that in there, but I wanted to let you know and let the other commissioners know my observation. So. Thank you so much, Chair. That That is a challenge with those the very low dog watering options. They, they get leaves and stuff in them, and they're, they're tough to keep actually circulating. Um, and we will go back and look at some other options. OK, thanks. All right, then we will turn those in. Thank you for that. OK. Um, number eight is the director's report by Dr. Turner, so we can just turn it back over to you. How exciting. <laughs> um, the director's report for tonight. So uh, again, uh, thank you for being here tonight. Um, and good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. I am Ann Turner. I'm the Director of Community Services. And it's always an exciting time in the Community Services Department. There's a lot going on, and we'll just get right into it. To kick us off uh, this weekend, we have some good, clean fun for you. It's very exciting. I would hate for all of you to just laze away your four-day weekend. So we have something to get you right out of bed and get you into service. So come on down and help us uh, clean up. 
Uh, we're going to clean up next to the 15 freeway that's on Compton Avenue between Ontario and Magnolia. If you have not signed up yet, it is not too late. You too can sign up right now and be there and meet us on Saturday. It's going to be fun. It's going to be 9 to 12. We're going to have donuts. We're going to have water. We're going to have trash pickers. And we're going to have the fancy, fun, and fashionable yellow vests for you to wear while you are helping us clean up. So um, if you would like to do that, we would love to have you. Uh, and that particular one, uh, we have not gotten the usual hundreds of people responding because it is a long weekend for folks. So if you would like to be there or you'd like to invite friends or neighbors, please feel free to do so. If you have any questions, please call Maddie Black. Her phone number is 951-736-2246. Or you can just uh, go on any of our QR codes and get that information and go ahead and sign up. So this is the map of where it's going to be. I know that some folks were having a hard time visualizing it, but it really is. Um, we have some parking there, and it's really between Ontario and Magnolia, um, right off of Compton Street, and, and parking will be marked. We will have a easy up there for you to come to and sign in. Uh, and we are... Um, the meetup uh, will be um, across the street from Old Timiskel Road and Compton Avenue, where you see the pop-up sign-in booth. Parking for the event will be along Compton Avenue and is noted by the green lines on the map. Well, I can't believe it, but it is already the holiday season, and here we are. So. I will let you know that I have agreed to be the holiday turkey this year. So if there is nothing else for you to enjoy about the senior drive through Thanksgiving feast, it is me in my bedazzled turkey outfit. It's going to be fabulous. So from 9 to 11 a.m., reservations are required. Um, we're as... as I'm not going to do it. Estancia del Sol. Uh, we're at 2, 2489 uh, California Avenue in Corona. Um, and you can call the Senior Center to make reservations. Um, the event is made possible in partnership with Estancia del Sol, uh, Century 21, Ed Garland Realty, and Ingardia Brothers. So come on down. It's going to be fun. Uh, again, it's going to be a drive through this year um, with respect to uh, COVID and to our senior health. We, we felt that that was the, the best way to do it, but we will surely have a wonderful time, and I encourage all of you to come on down and join us. And before long, it is the holiday lighting ceremony um, following our drive through Thanksgiving feast, it's our holiday lighting celebration on December 5th at 5 p.m. Mark your calendars. We'll be at the historic Civic Center front lawn located at 815 West 6th Street. Uh, you can join us for an evening of pictures with Santa, live entertainment, an artisan's market, fruit vendors, fruit vendors, food vendors, uh, spark, of, <laughs> spark of Love Toy Drive, Luminaries for Life, and so much more. Uh, it's going to be a lovely, and we have a very special Parks and Recreation surprise, but we will not tell you what it is until you come to the holiday lighting, and it will be unveiled for you in a celebration of the holidays. Uh, Story Walk at Mountain Gate Park. I am so excited about this. The Association of Bookmobile and Outreach Services celebrates Story Walk Week, November 15th through 19th, and the Story Walk is a uh, Story Walk is a Let's Move Libraries initiative to support library literacy and healthy families. There were 469 submissions, um, and they received from 49 states and several different countries. And guess who won? Yes, you guessed it. Your City of Corona Story Walk has been selected as the featured program. Visit social media during the week of November 15th to celebrate this great new program. Uh, and I know that some of you were up there with us um, uh, when we unveiled it. And now it, you know, it changes every month. So there's a new story up there. But it's just a lovely, lovely time. And it really activated that park, the combination of the new playground equipment and the story walk. Mountain Gate is really 
become a really lovely spot for families, not just for sports or not just for tennis, but really for really interacting and activating with that park. So we're very excited about that and very proud of uh, all of our community services folks working at the Corona uh, Public Library who made that possible. So thanks to them. And as always, I bring you a Trails Master Plan update. So exciting news. Phase two is underway. What? Yes, we got our bids in. We have reviewed them. And we are getting ready to, to recommend awarding the bid for the Trails Master Plan phase two. Uh, we have a few more uh, sort of T's to cross and I's to dot. But we are happy to announce that we are well on the way and keeping in our timeline for the Trails Master Plan. So we expect to award by the end of the month. Uh, and then begin our process of working with the vendor uh, and, and beginning all of that sort of pre-planning piece. And we will come back and update you in January about where we are with that. But we are, we are on track, which is lovely. And then I just want to take a moment. This is sort of that sad and happy and more sad uh, <laughs> uh, moment. But Christy Gavitt, who has been with us for quite some time, over 14 years, um, is going to be retiring from the city of Corona. So she has been the analyst in, uh, in, for Parks and Recreation, and she is excited to announce her retirement. She looks forward to enjoying mountain life at her home, babysitting her French bulldog grand puppies, and spending more time with her family. Most of all, as the Community Services Department, we really want to take time to thank Christy. Um, we spent some time in a budget meeting with her today, and her incredible support over the years has been invaluable. She knows our budget inside and out. She's training all of us to be ready for this budget season, and we will miss her very much during this budget season. But beyond just what she's done for us, her energy, her infectious laugh, her joy and the love of what she does uh, has made our department richer and a wonderful place to be. And we wish her the very best on her new adventure. She will be with us through the end of the year to help ease the transition. And we are currently hiring for a management analyst in our department. So again, if you know somebody who's great and would love to come and work with us at Community Services, we're a fun place to work. So um, have them look at uh, our Corona website. And uh, we hope to uh, have somebody in place uh, by the new year. And that's the end of my report. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Wonderful. Thank you. Do you have any questions, Commissioner Munoz? I don't. Okay. Commissioner Peretti, do you have anything to add? The story walk, I just, I, I loved it. I wanted to say good job on that. Thing. That was so much fun, and I've had friends that have visited, and it's, it's awesome. So, thanks. All right. And I would just uh, like to encourage my fellow commissioners to come to the Thanksgiving meal uh, drive through that they're having for the seniors. Uh, typically, the commission helps the senior center during the Thanksgiving. And that's always a good time. I've done that, brought my kids, try to do it every year. I also sponsored some meals. So that's available for people. It's still available online if you want to sponsor some meals, which I did. And um, I would also ask you to assist the Corona Parks Foundation with the pictures for Santa. Um, pictures with Santa, I mean, at the, at the holiday lighting, if you're interested. We will be there, and we could use all the help we can get. Always a long line. It's always a lot of fun. And we typically hand out some candy and just try to keep the kiddos corralled and the line moving. So it's a little bit like herding cats, but we manage. So all hands on deck. If you're up for that challenge, we could use the help. All right, thank you. That's all I have on that. And we can move on then to agenda number nine. Item number nine is YMCA Aquatic Program Proposal, presentation by Mr. Lass. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. Um, it is a pleasure to be here this evening. Um, I am actually really excited about this. This is a proposal uh, we received from our good friends at the Corona Norco Family Y. And I'm actually joined today by uh, Ms. Audrey Ekno, CEO, uh, to my left. Um, so what I'm going to be providing to you is, well, in your packet, you received a copy of the letter that we received ourselves. Uh, but 
really, I just want to explore this on just a, a cursory review um, and a, an exploratory phase, if you will. So the letter we received um, was dated October 28, 2021, so fairly recent here. Um, but essentially, what we, the Y would like to do is work with the city of Corona uh, to es establish uh, aquatic programming within the community. This is a program that the city does currently provide, um, but this is also a cornerstone uh, program of the YMCA, and this is a great uh, potential uh, partnership that could really benefit our community and our residents. So a quick review. So what does the city currently offer? Um, our programming is largely seasonal. So summer aquatics being the big one, you know, it's the heat, you know, getting out there, splashing around is always a lot of fun. Uh, but also, you know, taking those classes that uh, teach that essential life skill, you know, that water safety element. This is something that we take with us through the rest of our lives. Um, we offer beginner, intermediate, advanced uh, level classes. We also work with our adaptive population as a continuation of our uh, for, uh, adaptive services. We provide lifeguard training uh, for our younger staff members who are ready to enter into the lifeguard profession, hopefully with us. <laughs> and then, of course, those uh, parent and me classes where you get to splash around and become more comfortable with the water. Year-round, um, we have very limited offerings, uh, especially post-pandemic, uh, but we do offer uh, private and semi-private uh, lessons uh, throughout the weekend. Um, and those are very small groups um, and very limited in the number of offerings that we can provide. So what facilities do we have as the city have? Uh, well, very few. Um, right now, um, we are very much limited to the Auburndale Community Center as our primary, and we have been operating our uh, private and semi-private lessons there. Um, even post-pandemic, uh, we were able to um, get some classes going there and try to accommodate as many residents as we could. Um, of course, being mindful, you know, staffing somewhat limited, you know, people are still filling out their bearings, whether or not they want to return to program. Uh, but for the families that do want to do this, uh, this is something we've been able to be out there. In fact, we'll have some classes running this weekend. Um, and the Armadale Community Center has been a great venue for this. It's a smaller facility, a little bit more comfortable, um, especially, you know, as, you know, you kind of come out of that pandemic lifestyle and, you know, the big world kind of seems a little intimidating at some times. Uh, City Park Pool has always been our primary um, for the aquatics program itself. It has multiple lanes, it can accommodate large groupings, as well as different program uses all at the same time. Um, however, this is um, an older facility, has some antiquated uh, challenges, maybe some deferred maintenance, um, and it's going to be a significant cost for the city. So that's something we're going to be assessing very soon separately uh, from this agreement. Uh, but what do we want to do with the city park pool property? Um, and what are we doing with city park as part of the city park master plan? So that will be reviewed separately. Also, um, we have a strong partnership with the Corona Norco Unified School District. Um, the city helped establish the Centennial High School uh, pool, uh, which is also a key location for our summer aquatics program. That partnership allows us uh, use of lanes, uh, worked into some of their own programming, but that is a beautiful state-of-the-art facility um, that we have had access to and will continue to have access to as part of our joint use agreement. So while we offer programs, we also work with several community groups. Um, the three that we are currently working with um, include uh, the Crocs, which is the uh, Corona Aquatic Swim Team. Uh, they've been a longstanding user at uh, City Park, and they have actually transitioned over to Auburndale, and that's been working for them there. Um, we've also been working with the American Scuba Academy, which is a brand new business uh, based out of here in Corona, where they teach scuba lessons. So that's also happening. Um, also, we use this for some internal purposes. So um, while we enjoy having our recreation fun, um, our PD, our fire, our first responders are doing swift water rescue training and other um, aquatic elements um, for the use of the pool, too. And I don't think the residents always know what's happening, other than we get the call, like, why are there so many police cars on the street? Uh, but yes, that is another element um, that the pool comes in very handy for. 
So the, the budget and the staffing, and what I'm providing to you is our current uh, budget, um, revenue, and expenditure expectations. However, I will say we've only been operating our program at about 25% capacity following the pandemic. So these numbers are not going to be reflective end of the year. It's a scalable program based on how many staff we have, how many participants we have. Um, but it does um, come at a cost to the general fund, and that's, of course, subsidizing an essential life skills for our community. Um, also with that, it is a part-time run program. So we have several different positions required to make this possible. Um, our assistant recreation coordinator and our pool managers are the only ones that you would see technically operating year round. And then, you know, that is also scalable depending on how many programs we have. Uh, but our water safety instructors, the, those WSIs, our lifeguards are largely seasonal. Um, those numbers spike, uh, hopefully, uh, during the summer as we onboard. But right now we're just at a trickle and we will be going into our annual seasonal hiatus for the holidays. Uh, where those numbers just kind of drop off altogether. A lot of these staff are actually uh, dual listed um, as part of our um, CS Leader 1s and 2 Series 2. So, so sometimes they wear two hats uh, or, you know, sometimes the, the lifeguard buoy, uh, depending on need and the seasonality of it, which has been a real great way for us to have movement within program uh, to cover areas, especially when we're shorter staffed uh, during the busy summer months. So we have some real challenges with our aquatics program, and I will be completely honest with that. Um, you know, coming out of the pandemic, I think the expectation is, you know, life returns to normal. Uh, but, you know, we, City Park Pool did close, um, so that reduces our capacity to some extent. Um, it's been difficult, and I would say historically difficult, to recruit and retain staff, especially on a seasonal basis. Um, we do have a limited quantity of offerings as a city. Um, the enrollment process is competitive uh, amongst the residents where you have to be lined up in some cases or you have to call in early. You have to be in the know to get these lessons and sometimes it's difficult to continue that. Um, and then there's also you know, better private and um, neighboring community programs that are often attractive. And I've heard that um, a number of times up here um, in our commission meetings. So our proposal, um, so the YMCA would like to assume operation of the city learn to swim programs at a comparable cost to the residents. Um, they would expand to provide uh, year round offerings, water based fitness programs, uh, senior specific programming, restored lap and open swim offerings, offer special events, and then of course, you know, increase that water safety awareness. Um, so I think you know, what we have offered is very limited in scope. Um, and I think if we were to talk to any of our residents to engage more, we'd find out that there's a lot more elements that they would like to see. And your pro year round program might be able to satisfy some of that. And the YMCA is highly qualified for this. Um, this is a flagship quality program. Um, they're renowned. Many families have memories of learning to swim with the Y. Um, a reputation as America's swim instructor, right? Um, they are also able to meet all those professional cra training criteria. So we send our staff to lifeguard training, WSI training, pool manager, you know, extensive hours on deck, uh, in-person training in order to make sure that we are compliant to all county safety regulations. And most importantly, that our families can have a good time out there in the pool, um, knowing uh, that we are there and present to make sure everybody is safe. Um, and then, you know, this is a, a partnership that exists in many other different communities and cities. Um, I was just talking to Audrey before the meeting. They've actually been touring uh, some of these sites and um, learning a little bit more about how they operate. Um, and these all operate very differently, too. So, again, I'm just providing you a cursory gl glance. We're not getting into the weeds of anything here just yet. Um, I'll kind of um, walk you through where we hope to go um, as we explore this a little bit more. So if we were to work with um, the why, I think it's important that we assess the pros and cons and what those impacts would mean um, operationally, but also to our residents. Uh, so of course, you know, the, the pros, you know, uh, swimming is an essential life skill. This is a service we should and do need to offer to our residents. Um, the YMCA is nationally known to provide high quality aquatic programs, again, strengthening that relationship we have. Uh, Year-round programming, again, that allows us to kind of expand the types of offerings and diversify a little bit more to be reflective of the needs of our residents. 
Um, and they could do so at a similar cost to participants, um, which in a way um, lessens a lot of um, the cost to the city. Uh, the cons um, immediately, you know, Thoughts are, you know, the city would have less control over the program itself. It's not something we are immediately staffing and being hands-on, but we're working with a partner agency. Um, so it's very important that we have a strong relationship and good communication for something like that to do well. Um, the city will, of course, still be responsible to maintain its own facility, and that uh, upkeep um, is time-intensive and costly. And then, of course, you know, change is not always exciting. Um, and, you know, there's a strong tradition in this community of learning to swim um, through the city. Uh, but this has also been a time of change regardless. I mean, we're coming on two years of flux and things being operated a little bit differently. And not all of our programs came out of the pandemic the same way. Um, in many cases, we've learned sometimes, you know, we can do things better, um, which has been great. So next steps, what do we want to do? Um, well, we want to explore the partnership feasibility. Uh, we want to make sure, you know, if we were to work out an agreement that it is mutually beneficial, um, benefits the city, it benefits the Y, and when we have a strong partnership, that benefits the residents. Uh, we want to, of course, outline what operation, uh, participant, and uh, cost to the city will be to make sure we anticipate and can manage expectations um, again, ex managing expectations, such a Jason word, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but we absolutely want to be reflective of the residents and their needs and their demands and see how we can do things better, work smarter, right? And um, as we explore that, we want to refine a timeline. Um, now is actually a really opportune time as we're um, going into a hiatus for our programs to critically assess and see, you know, if we were to flip into a partnership-based model, you know, how quickly could we put that in place? How quickly could we get that out to the residents? Um, and how can we make sure everyone's brought aboard uh, so nobody gets left behind? So the ask before you, fairly simple. Um, well, you, you're welcome to discuss uh, the proposal. I'm always interested in your feedback. Um, just advise staff to continue to work with the YMCA to develop a more full-fledged program. So again, I'm just bringing this to you on a very superficial level. We want to get into uh, the more weeds. Uh, we want to know what an actual agreement will look like. We'll want to look at some models uh, before we bring anything forward to you. And we'd like to do that in January. And if this looks like um, a good mutually beneficial official agreement, um, we would ask that you provide a recommendation to the city council. So that's it for my presentation today. Um, I would, of course, be happy to answer uh, any questions you might have. And then Audrey is here as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lass. All right. Um, Commissioner Munoz, do you have any questions or comments that you would like to make? I do. Several comments. No questions, but uh, great presentation. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, three things I got out of that presentation was that, uh, yes, we have real challenges, but I see those as real opportunities. And I know you'll put your full weight into that part of the program. Partnership is, a, is, a, is like a marriage. You know, we need to communicate better. And as we go through the paperwork and the, the, the trips forward in, in time with the YMCA and other groups, too, it's going to be positive. And then uh, and with that notion of positive uh, aspects of our uh, swim program. As a child, I grew up in the, in the valley. I learned how to swim in the pool. That must have been like eight million kids in the pool at the same time. And it seemed to me very unorganized. So, But I know time's gone by and that the program's a lot better today. And Commissioner Whining was big in swimming too, a coach at high school and junior high school levels. And so he'd be promoting what you're talking about today. I'm sure he would. And lastly, I like the positive things that we're thinking about coming out of the pandemic. It's been really, we've been downtrodden the last couple of years uh, from 2020 and May really to today, really through the pandemic. So anything positive that we talk about, anything positive we think about is going to move forward to something that's going to be for, for the greater good of the kids. And so I don't want to see that little Tom Munoz being able to, not to swim too well, you know, and all those kids need to have the opportunity to swim. So the more we can offer them, the more we can expand that kid's safety factor in the, in the community. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Munoz. Commissioner Beretti, do you have anything that, uh, any questions you'd like to add? It looks good to me. I was just wondering if, if we had an opportunity, if we we're going to take some time to tap into the community and see 
what what the community feels, um, how they feel about this. I know this is in the early stages, and you guys haven't, you guys aren't moving forward. But I I, I just think that at some point, I mean. I love how enthusiastic uh, Tom is, but definitely just to try to get some feedback from the community. I like what I see, uh, and I'm sure the other commissioners do, but just just, uh, just a random question. All right, thank you. Um, I did have a just a cursory question and then a couple comments. Um, how do you see the cost for the families being affected if we transition over into this proposal? Um, I, I think we have to definitely further assess the cost, and that also kind of plays into the model agreement that we set, uh, too. Uh, you know, we haven't assessed the cost in quite some time, um, so there might be a little bit of an increase there. Um, I think we also need to look at what our neighboring cities are doing, too, um, because while well, some of them are offering very similar programs at much higher quality, at maybe a rate of $5 more and what that might mean. So I think, you know, us understanding the market, too, kind of comes into evaluation. Um, but I think most importantly is, you know, any program or agreement we establish, there needs to be a sustainability effort to it to ensure that these programs can go on, that they have room to grow. Um, and to address uh, Commissioner Variety too, you know, are reflective of the needs of the community. We've been so focused on just the younger swim um, that we've missed the whole entire, you know, adult demo, uh, folks that like fitness um, or just enjoy the fun of looking forward to, you know, a group exercise class or an aqua zumba, things like that. And I think the Y is really great at keeping up with trends. Um, they have models that they can borrow from. Um, and success stories in other communities um, that could really benefit us. Um, so I think as we bring that forward to you, we will want to be real with what any costs are, what those impacts are to the residents. Um, and maybe there's even more benefits to you, um, but there may be cons. So I think you know whatever we bring to you, we just want to be fully honest in what we're seeing. All right, thank you. I just wanted to add my comments. Um, having two kids five years apart, I probably spent uh, a better part of 10 to 15 years in the Corona swim program ish, you know, however you want to call it. So I've kind of kind of gone through the gamut where it's been difficult to get classes. It's been very limited. There's limited pool space and um, to the point where also been through it where the instruction did not match up for what my kids needs were left the city went to another city to get swim lessons got better quality swim lessons for the same amount of money in a neighboring city um, and then also just coming onto the commission then being able to see the challenges that the staff was having that we weren't able to continue with the SWIN program that was meeting people's needs. It was holding up a high enough standard. It was kind of an up and down thing. Good some years, not good other years. It was very hit or miss um, as far as that was going and as far as participation, not having enough room to accommodate the number of kids that we had. And then on top of that, we don't do anything for adults. There's no senior uh, aquatics program or anything which is very much needed here. So um, one of the things that I see as an advantage to going with a proposal like this is you get to explore what the YMCA can offer. And they can offer all of these things and they can offer a diversified level of instruction which the city was probably not able to do to the, its fullest extent. And hopefully the Y will be able to show a proposal that can take that to the next level. Um, my experience with the YMCA and SWIM also is grandma lives in the wonderful Las Vegas Clark County and YMCA runs their SWIM programs and they have a lot going on and they aren't very particular about whether you're a resident or not. They'll just take two bucks from you and throw you in. So, you know, um, it, of course, everyone does it differently, you know, but it was a great experience. Um, and so I'm kind of familiar with, you know, what the Y can offer. And I'm hoping and I'm really looking forward to this proposal to see that this will grow the SWIM program to meet the community needs better than what we were, we were able to do, especially in the last couple of years even pre-COVID, you know, we were kind of struggling. So this will be good. I'm looking forward to that. So thank you. All right, if there's nothing else on that, we can move on to our agenda item number 10, which is a discussion of a dark commission meeting in December. 
Normally the commission will go dark in December because there's events and the staff does not have things on the agenda that are pressing and they can wait for the new year. Do you have anything to add, Dr. Turner? I would just say that we want to make sure that, that the commissioners are able to attend our events and, and support our events. And we know that one more night away from your family, particularly during the holidays, we'd like to give you the gift of time uh, and hope that you will join us in, in community events. And we are ready to um, start the new year with a really robust uh, agenda uh, and, and to bring that back to the commission. Thank you. Do you have any questions or comments about the December meeting, Commissioner Munoz? I don't. Okay, Commissioner Veretti, anything? I do not. Okay. Um, well, do we need to take a vote? I don't think we do. If we're all in agreement that we can go dark, I think I think we're fine. Okay. All right. Then we will be dark in December, lacking agenda items, and hopefully everyone will have a happy and safe holiday. And our next item is our consent calendar. Um, this is a refile, uh, receive and file, so we just need an approval of the consent calendar. Does anyone want to make a motion? Motion. All right. And I second it. Okay. We could have a vote on, I don't know if our voters are working, but do we need to do an oral? Aye. Okay. Commissioner Verretti votes aye. Commissioner Munoz? Aye. Aye. And I vote aye as well. So we'll move on and say that passes. And moving on to the commissioner members' reports and comments. Commissioner Munoz, do you have any reports and comments you'd like to make? <clears throat> <I do>. Sorry. <laughs> you, years ago when I was a lot younger, I had the opportunity to be a part of the Thanksgiving feast. And uh, it was a blessing. I'd be a part of that. that. I see my aunts and uncles now at that age, 93, and that's them that you're serving uh, today, but in the past also. So I really applaud the city for doing that, you know, taking part in that program. And Saturday, Paul and I had an opportunity to do the, almost the same thing in Orange County with the homemade. And uh, a lot of people out there are homeless, and uh, they're hurting for food, hurting for warmth, hurting for a, a nod in the right direction that they're... It's, this is just temporary. And uh, there's kids out there, mothers, that only have a, well, there's no husbands, you know, they're gone, and they have two children. And, and or you might find a small family. Uh, I saw a young man and two kids and his, his wife, and, and he's a lot of kids running around, you know. And in years past, I was talking to a lady I was involved at the program with, and uh, I said, you know, those kids are important because they're our future, you know. And uh, as a younger, older man, 20 years ago or so, opportunity to volunteer for the VIP program, which is Volunteers in Probation. And most of the kids you met there at the, in Juvenile Hall uh, were all latchkey kids. And I can tell you from their stories, and uh, they may have been lying to me, but I doubt it. You know, they had none, one thing in common. The thread was that they had no one at home that loved them. You know, and who knows why? You know, maybe the parents are both working. You know, but, so we, I, for example, I'm just I'm amazed because my parents were the best parents and still are the best parents. So I've had to, all my life as being good parents keep me involved in everything you can think of, you know, more than you'd want to do, you know. So I'm very involved with that. So from that to holiday lighting, my kids were all part of that program, Get, freezing your hands off in the snow, you know, playing a part of, as, of an elf. That was always fun, you know. So those are good programs to go to. And then also the story walk. I tell you, I had an opportunity to take part in the story walk grand opening ceremony, and what a blessing that park is, you know. And again, your staff is fantastic. You know, Danny is just amazing. You know, just uh, that your staff is amazing because they're always the same enthusiastic people. You know, whatever happens at home, they come to you like you, and it's full of enthusiasm, and spirit. So that is shared with the community. When the community sees that, he's just and they, they walk home saying, "Wow, I love living in Corona." You know, and Story Walk is all that. You know, and it changes periodically. A story does, but it's amazing what you can read just walking along the path of travel there. You know, just, you, time just slips on by and just have fun with the, on a Saturday or Sunday. So that's my uh, piece for the day. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Verretti, do you have anything? No, I'm just excited for, for the holidays. Uh, you can count on, on myself, definitely, and hopefully the rest of the uh, commission being at, at the uh, Thanksgiving 
uh, for seniors and, and, and the lighting. Um, the holidays are, are a good time, and I missed out. I was kind of early. I was new to the commission board last year, so I'm all in, and I can't wait to be a part of it this year. All right, thank you. Um, I would just like to say my comments that um, Commissioner Whiney has resigned, and we would, as a commission, like to thank him for his service to the community and for his service here on the commission. Um, he will be missed. We um, also were missing um, Commissioner Olson tonight, but hopefully we will get him back in the new year. I want to wish you, everyone, the staff, and the rest of my commission a happy holiday since we're going to be dark in December. Um, and I think other than, you know, just the fantastic time I had at the Mountain Gate Park opening, you guys did a fantastic job. Enjoy that story walk as well. I mean, that park is just coming along nicely, so it's wonderful to see. So I appreciate that, and thank you for all your hard work this year. Um, and I look forward to next year. And are there any announcements that we have on the agenda? No? Okay. All right, and with that, we can call this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.